To trace the history of the Kurds, one must begin at the beginning. For it was here, in the land some believe was once the Garden of Eden, that this resilient ancient people first left their mark upon the world. Nourished by the headwaters of the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, archaeologists believe it was within this cradle of civilization that Kurdish ancestors first pioneered agriculture, animal husbandry, weaving, metalwork, and the making of pottery. For visitors, a trip through the land of the Kurds is a trip through biblical history. The great prophets Nahum, Jonah, Habakkuk, and Daniel are all buried within the vast borders of what came to be known as Kurdistan. The city of Ahmadiyya still stands, marking the place many believed wise men, known as Magi, began their journey to follow a great star that appeared in the sky. As centuries passed, these tribes would fall to the forces of Alexander the Great at the Battle of Gaugamela, and later rise to their zenith as traders along the legendary Silk Road. In time, the Mongol hordes would make them prisoners followed by the Ottomans, who would make them princes. But whether their occupiers were good or bad, killers or saints, the Kurds would learn to do what they must to survive. At the end of World War I, the Kurds were finally promised independence, with the dismantling of the Ottoman Empire and the creation of new nation-states. Instead, with the stroke of a pen, Kurdistan was parceled out among Turkey, Syria, Iran, and Iraq. Today, the world's 30 million Kurds, equivalent to the population of Canada, make up the largest ethnic group in existence without a recognized state of their own. We are neither Arabs, nor Turks, and nor Persians. We are Muslims, but uh, we are a different nation. We have our own language, our own history, and uh, our own folklore and everything. The fact that we Kurds are a completely different ethnic group than the Arabs and the Turks and even the Persians. Because of that background and, uh, and also because of all of the suffering they have seen, they have completely a different mindset. At the time when uh, the central Iraqi regime, before the toppling of Saddam Hussein, was uh, busy with, with uh, creating uh, weapons of mass destruction, we were busy uh, planting trees and creating uh, new classes at our universities and opening new departments and building uh, centers of uh, education for our children and for our youth. We are trying to build a nation, we are trying to improve the scientific standards of our community, we are trying to spread democracy, we are trying to teach the people how to respect each other and accept uh, the rights of children and, and women in general. This country is a peaceful country. The people are very, very uh, lovely. Um, I don't think th that our region will be a, a dam between us and uh, another, uh, another countries and other cultures. The Kurds are an ancient people who've lived their entire lives at the crossroads of the world, accustomed to living with people of many different religions. Today, as in the days of old, you'll find in the hearts of the Kurdish people ethnic and religious tolerance. Today, uh, for instance, in Kurdistan, you see churches beside mosques in the Kurdish cities. You know, we have Christians, we have Armenians, we have Yazidis, we have Muslims, we have Jews, we have all types of religions and ethnic groups and we've been living together uh, for ages and that shows you know, how tolerant the, the Kurdish people are. In the cities of Kurdistan you'll see not only Kurds but Arabs, Turkmen, Assyrians, Armenians, Chaldeans, Shia, Sunni all living peacefully side by side because this is who they are. This is how Kurdistan has always been, long before the country of Iraq ever existed.